Maybe I need a career change. Two days in a row waking up in a semi-conscious stupor is enough for anybody. My nose is so sore, my eyes water when I inhale, and all my front teeth shift slightly when I exhale. On top of all this, I found out that the world population could be annihilated because of me. That's just too much guilt to heap on a guy at this hour of the morning. Looks like I'm on my own. I'll need to find that disc the Colonel referred to. And what about that Countess? Was she on the level or was she just feeding me a line? Okay, there's something wrong with this picture. When I was here before, the place looked like a palace. Now it looks like the aftermath of an IRS auction. Somebody wanted me to believe the person I talked to was a real countess. Now I can see I've been played for a sucker. But who set me up and why? Well, there's a bald eagle perched on the chandelier. Man. Now that the animal rights lobby is huge, bald eagles are everywhere. <laughs> They're worse than pigeons. Front door was open when I got here. The eagle must have flown in. Looks like it's got a bright cigarette case in its claws. I've heard that eagles are attracted to shiny objects. Searching through that fireplace could be a real pain in the ash. The decorative mantle really sets off the fireplace. The decorative mantle. Hey, neat. I saw a watch just like this one in my spy supply catalog. Really nice spy watches have things like built-in parachutes. Maybe there's more to this watch than meets the eye. What's this? It's a secret compartment. Looks like an expensive cigarette case. Uh, there's only one cigarette left in the case. Maybe I'll keep it around for a smoking emergency. Whoever that was that met me here the other night may have set me up, but I'll bet you didn't get her cleaning deposit back. Looks like the obituary section of yesterday's standard examiner. The ashtrays loaded with expensive imported cigarette butts. The ashtrays loaded. Whoever that was that met me here, the. Only the most callous criminal would be so careless with plant life. It looks like a pile of torn up paper scraps. These doors may have opened at one time, but they appear to be permanently sealed shut.
When I get to the colonel's office, the police are just leaving. They tell me they've combed the place and come up empty. I'm not surprised. As I step inside, I try to remember what the colonel told me. Something about a winter chip and an emergency disc hidden somewhere in the display case. Maybe the info on the disc will tell me something about this chameleon. Oh, nice bow. Boy, the chameleon sure was in a destructive mood. Well, the colonel certainly does like his calendar. Spicy. Boy, the chameleon... Picture frames lying face down. Oh, nice looking dame. This must be the Colonel Squeeze. If I could track her down, maybe she could give me some more information. Rosebud! Boy, the chameleon sure. Deluxe Hydro Dispenser. And I thought my water cooler was nice. These desk drawers were probably searched by the chameleon, but maybe he missed something. Uh, some sort of greeting card. These desk drawers were... My PI instincts and keen sense of smell tell me that this envelope was sent by a woman of some kind. These desk drawers were... This must be the disc the Colonel mentioned. Maybe I can run it on his computer. Nice computer. Looks like it's all hooked up. Nothing's coming up. I'll need to load up a disc before I get any information off this computer. The Colonel's file cabinet. Hmm. Lock. Oh. The Colonel keeps this picture hung up so people will assume that he was in the Air Force. Actually, he was in the Coast Guard's elite volleyball unit. This must be the safe the Colonel referred to on the emergency disc. This is a top of the line security safe, and I'll need a combination to open this. Sailing is one of the Colonel's two obsessions. 
The other one can't be mentioned in polite society. I'm a friend of a friend. Look, if you're looking for a date, I don't do that anymore. I have a boyfriend and I'm expecting him any minute. Listen, I hate to be the one to tell you, but I have some bad news for you. Someone tried to murder the Colonel. I don't know if he's gonna make it. He may be dead now for all I know. The Colonel? Dead? I can't believe it! I guess we won't be going to Bermuda next week. Bermuda, huh? You know, if you have your tickets already, it'd be a shame to waste them. Hold on a second. How do I know that you didn't, like, kill the Colonel? Well, he's not dead yet. And besides, if I were here to kill you, I'd have done it already. Okay, fine. Then why don't you just, like, leave me alone? I'm very upset. I have an item that the Colonel was going to send you. I'll give it to you if you answer some questions. Okay, let's see it. There wasn't any money in it? <laughs> okay, I guess I can answer a few questions. Well, he was nice to me, so I was nice to him. I mean, it was fun. I feel kind of bad now, though, because um, he gave me this package that I wasn't supposed to open unless something happened to him, but I opened it anyway. And I was so disappointed because there was nothing in it except for this stupid key. No money, no jewels, no nothing. Sure, I guess you can take it. I, I don't even know where I'd use it. Well, I'm just a lonely girl looking for a new friend to play with. <laughs> you might be fun, but you don't look like you have very much money. These documents are all in code. Hopefully the Colonel's got some sort of decoding manual around here. Wow, detective files, detective dragnet, unofficial detective. I've never figured out the Colonel's tendency toward tawdry smut. A small return receipt from UPEX. Apparently the Colonel sent something recently. Back again? You know, I've been thinking, um, I think we could, like, be friends. You know, I think you should stick around and talk to me for a while, because, um, I don't want to be lonely. Nice try, sister. I'd fall for your lines if I hadn't been around the block before. In a couple of days, you'd have my heart and probably several other vital organs sitting on your mantle like trophies. I feel like you know me somehow. Ask me anything you want. Oh yeah, I got another dumb letter from the Colonel. I mean, there were some, like, numbers and stuff written on a piece of paper inside. You can have it. I can't even understand what it is.
codebook looks like it'd come in handy if I could find some coded documents. I couldn't believe it when the name Elena Moore appeared in the Colonel's decoded files. I used to date her sister a few years back. Elena was an annoying 12-year-old who had a knack for entering rooms at the wrong time. It's obvious she still recognizes me when she opens the motel room door. So you're little Allie Moore, huh? Last time I saw you, you were quite a pest. And you'd just gotten your braces put on, right? Yeah, but that was quite a while ago, Tex, when I've grown up. You know... I used to have quite a crush on you. Yeah, I remember. Speaking of crushed, how's your sister? I haven't seen her since our nasty little breakup. She got married a few years ago. In fact, it was Debbie's husband who helped me get hired at GRS. It's been just over a year. Since then, I've worked as Marcus Tucker's personal secretary. He's the director of GRS. So what does GRS do specifically? They do genetic research gene mutations, genetic viruses, that sort of thing. It was very professional, high-tech. GRS hired only the best young scientists. But from the beginning, everything seemed really mysterious and secretive. Is that why you quit? I didn't leave until I started receiving the threatening notes. At first, I didn't take them seriously, but they kept coming. I decided to get away and use my vacation time, but when I got back, someone had gone through my apartment. That's when I checked into this motel. How did the colonel find you? I don't know. He just appeared here one day. It took him a while to convince me that I could trust him. But now, for all I know, he's dead. I'm scared, Tex. Really scared. Look, I'll do what I can to help you, but I need to know everything. Why do you think someone at GRS wants you out of the way? I'm not sure. Since I was Mr. Tucker's assistant for a couple years, I had access to most of his files. Maybe someone thinks I saw something I shouldn't have. Well, since you don't work at GRS anymore, why do you think your life's in danger? The last day I came to work, I got a note that said my life was in immediate danger. When I saw that someone had broken into my apartment, I knew that I wouldn't be safe anywhere. Sounds like my next move ought to be to GRS. Can you help me get in? Yes. I still have a pass key to the main doors. You can take it, but please be careful. GRS has a 24-hour security watch. With the colonel in the hospital, I have no one to turn to. I don't know if I should, but I'm going to trust you. I tell Elena to sit tight and wait for me till I get back. I also warned her to keep the door locked and not open it for anyone except me. Elena obviously doesn't know anything more than what she's told me. She's given me the break I need, though, a passkey to GRS. Like the Colonel, I have a feeling that GRS will provide a few answers. The GRS office complex is located in the heart of New San Francisco. Elena's passkey gets me into the lobby, which is empty. A directory shows Marcus Tucker's office on the fourth subterranean level. I take the elevator down. Before the doors open, I hear a warning. Attention, Attention. Lethal, lethal security probe on premises. As 
supervisor. Now the door. Got an idea this will come in handy. Boy, whoever sat here was really good at tic tac toe. What a cute little. Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, what do we have here? It's like a computer access card. Computer pass card required to access this computer. Thank you. I have no idea what these things do, and I'm not sure I want to know. He had computer consoles just like these on Lost in Space. As a matter of fact, I think these are the props. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. Unless some prankster swapped nameplates, this was Ava Shanzi's desk. Wow, they had computer consoles just like this on Lost in Space. This type of safe requires a six digit code to open. If the people No way into this high security. No way into this high security area. The switch to the door is that red button on the table. But what's that I see sitting next to it? That's a roast beef sandwich. The opening isn't big enough for me to get through.
<laughs> Poor little guy. He must have tripped something on the console, or maybe the old roast beef sandwich spontaneously combusted. At least he got the door open for me. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. That button probably triggers the door. Looks like a mini disc. Something tells me I have to see whatever's on it. It's a memo. It says, Memo to Marcus Tucker. This disc was confiscated from Ava Shanzi before she was imprisoned on the Moon Child. We are still searching her personal effects for any sign of the winter chip. This laser disc is titled, So You're Starting a New Job at GRS, narrated by Marcus Tucker. This looks like it might open one of those office doors. Just standard. What have we here? A computer access card. Computer pass card required to access this computer. Thank you. I've made initial contact with the cult. The colonel's information was right on. There are at least two employees here that are members. I haven't been able to find a solid link between GRS and the cult, but I'm sure Tucker knows what's going on. Over the past month, I've been letting people know that I support the eugenics movement. Finally, I was contacted today by a cult member named Murray. He's a project supervisor. I'll be attending an initiating meeting tomorrow night. I've gotten to know one of the young researchers, Paul Dubois. I'm fairly sure he knows nothing about the cult. He told me that Tucker doesn't trust most of his staff and has the project groups working separately. Nine or ten people came to the meeting in Tucker's office. The only ones I knew were Tucker, Murray, and Paul. I got the name of only one other cult member, a creepy little Nazi named Camden Leander. He seemed to be the highest ranking member. I didn't learn much. They seemed more concerned with grilling me and Paul. I don't think Paul is cut out for the cult. I think he's attended the meetings to get to know me. I've advised him to get out while he can. Also, there's a young woman named Elena Moore who works as Tucker's assistant. She doesn't seem to know what's going on here. I think she knows too much and she'll probably be eliminated when the current project is finished. I've warned her to get out of the company. It looks like the project is almost completed. The cult members are ecstatic. I keep hearing them use the words purification and alluvian. I don't know what they mean, but whatever's going to happen is going to happen soon. I'm not going to use a chip until I have a better idea of what they're up to. At our last meeting, there was an older man. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. Apparently, he's in charge. I noticed him staring at me during the meetings. Afterwards, he pulled me aside and said there would be a 
special place for me in the new order. I'm going to play along. My home movies would look great on that screen. There must be a remote control panel that controls this video screen. Maybe it's somewhere on the conference table. Oh, it's an electronic shop laser disc player. Chintzy, but it looks like it works. Ah, another Playbub magazine. Say what you will, but I love the articles. desk looks like a some kind of remote control pad probably controls the audio video display things useless to me unless it's hooked up to a TV Wow, they had computer consoles just like this on Lost in Space. As a matter of fact, I think these must be the... This panel must control access to the safe. Looks like it's a voice-activated ID system. My guess is that only Marcus Tucker's voice will work on this system. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. An old piece of masking tape is stuck here. Looks like some numbers are printed on it. One, four, two, two, three, five. Eh, probably doesn't mean a thing. An old-fashioned red tip wouldn't match. My Zippo's out of fluid. Maybe I should keep this around for an emergency light. I'll need to turn on the access panel first. To access the safe, please prepare for voice ID verification. Please speak your name now. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Stand by for DNA scan. DNA incoming. 
incompatible. Attention, security, intruder, on, premises. This table doesn't. Let's take a look at this Buddha. Whoops. Ah, so clumsy. Well, I'll be done. This must be the winter chip. It was right here under the cult's nose the whole time. That watch's secret compartment may be the safest place for me to hide the winter chip. Looks interesting, but I'll need to find a video cassette player. What's in that vial? It says cigarette viral powder. Viral powder for cigarettes? A cigarette load is a classic practical joke, but this is ridiculous. Cabinet doors are locked. Maybe there's something worth finding inside. <laughs> Looks like a state-of-the-art VCR. Okay, it's turned on now. My home movies would look great on that screen. There must be a remote control panel that controls this video screen. Maybe it's somewhere on the conference table. Though not an effective way to infect the mass population, <coughs> the viral powder combined with tobacco then inhaled is the quickest way to provoke death. Witness its effects on the traitor Paul Dubois. <coughs> on a larger scale, the virus can be introduced into the upper atmosphere by means of dispenser satellites. 
With proper flight path alignment and a minimum of 100 dispensers, Earth's atmosphere could be thoroughly saturated within 12 hours. Once in the atmosphere, the viral molecules bond to condensing moisture and create a seeding effect. The ensuing rainstorms would bring the virus down to the planet's surface. As we have witnessed, the effect of the virus is almost instantaneous, and the entire fauna population of the Earth should expire within several days at most. While this method of extermination is thorough, its residual effects are significant. The atmosphere will continue to cycle the virus for years until natural decay and filtering cause the viral strain to become a negligible portion of the atmosphere. We estimate that this process will require a minimum of 30 years to complete. Sure, I'm glad to be out of GRS. I'll need to catch a few winks before I go anywhere else. First thing in the morning, I'll need to go back and check on Elena. There's been a change in plans. You and I have a date with destiny. Let's go. It feels like I've been asleep for about 10 seconds when I hear something moving through the office. Hello again, Murphy. Remember me? If not, how about now? The ability to change forms is a talent I was born with. Metamorphosis is difficult to explain, but I've found it quite useful. I haven't had a chance to thank you for your efforts to our cause. You did us a great favor in retrieving the statuette. It was the last key to fulfilling our ancient prophecies. Now we wait until the appointed time. Incidentally, I've kidnapped your girlfriend. I know you're looking for a certain computer chip. Abandon your search now, and I won't harm Miss Moore. It would be a shame to kill her. Besides, it's not easy stuffing a head into one of those water coolers. Just ask your friend Pug. He's cooling off right now. <laughs> 